Hello grade tens and welcome back to another video on functions, the parabola with me, Miss Martins. In today's video, we're going to be looking at finding the equation of a parabola if I give you the function, if I give you the graph, if I give you the sketch or the drawing. Now, if you've missed my previous two videos on parabolas, I suggest you start there. I will link it over here and in the description below. You need to understand those basics before we can move on to finding the equation. So if you haven't watched those videos, go do it now. So it can be a little bit challenging to know how to go from the sketch with some points given, maybe the y intercept, maybe the x, maybe some random points to the equation in the form that we see over here. Now, the first thing that I need to discuss is that is the form, the equation form for a parabola, but you may see it like this as well. So over here is the standard form for a parabola, y equals ax squared plus q. And when we ask you to give the equation of a parabola, we want it in that form. y equals a number in front of x squared, okay, which is your a, which indicates the shape of your graph, plus q, which is your y-intercept. However, in order to find that equation in that form, you may have to use the x-intercept form of the equation, which I show over here. So I'm going to do three separate examples where three different pieces of information are given in each example, and you'll see how this works. So in example one, they give you the y-intercept and another point. It doesn't matter which point, but they give you the y-intercept. Example two will be they give you the x-intercept and a random point, not an intercept, so not a y-intercept. And over here, example three will be they give you two random points, not intercepts. So let's start with example number one. In this example over here, you can see that we are given a y-intercept over there. Our y-intercept is zero and eight, and we're given another point. In this case, it actually is the x-intercept, but it doesn't really matter what other point they give you as long as they give you another point. So in this case, our other point is two and zero. Now this is probably the easiest type of equation to find when they give you the y-intercept because this is how it works. We know that our q is our y-intercept. So our q is where the graph cuts the y-axis, it's our y-intercept, and in this case it is 8. So in the place of q I can sub in negative 8. Sorry, that should be a negative because that over here is a negative 8. So that should be negative 8. Then we have another point. So my other point they give you a point. It is 2 and 0. We know that coordinates or points are made up of x's and y's. So in the place of y, I'm going to put 0 because that is the point that they gave me. Then we don't know what a is. We're looking for a basically. And we know that x, based on the point that they give me, is 2. So we're going to sub it in the place of x. So 2, use brackets, squared. So if you solve that over here, we've got take the 8 over, becomes positive 8. 2 squared is 4, so it's going to be 4a. Therefore, a is equal to 8 divided by 4, which is 2. So now we know my q. We know q is negative 8. And we know our a is 2. So all that's left for us to do is to fill it in to our equation. y equals ax squared plus q. So y equals a, a is 2 in this case, x squared stays open, and plus q in this case, it is negative 8. And there's our equation. Right, so that's if they give you the y-intercept, we know what q is, the other coordinate you sub into x and y. Let's have a look at example number 2. Example number 2. Now you can see that this is different from example number 1 because we are not given a y-intercept. So where the graph cuts the y-axis, that coordinate is not given to me. I know it's going to be negative based on how the graph looks, but I don't know what it is. What I do have, however, are my x-intercepts you can see over there. And I have what we call a random point. Now I'm calling it a random point because it's not an intercept. Okay? The first thing that you need to remember is the x-intercept form of the equation. So remember, x-intercept form of the equation. You need to memorize this, keep it in your head, and it will help you solve the equation when certain information, like in this case, the x-intercepts are given. x-intercept form of the equation. Let's take a look. Awesome. So this is the x-intercept form of our equation. And remember, we said x1 will be our 1 x-intercept, 
and our x2 is our other x-intercept. So how this looks is if I fill this out with my x-intercepts, we've got y equals a x minus x1, which in this case is positive 1. So x minus 1. And over here, x minus minus 1. Do you see the x-intercept form of the equation? says x minus x2. x2 is a negative, so it's minus minus. Therefore, x plus 1. Then the next thing that we do is remember that random point? That's where the random point comes in. So remember our random point is 2 and 6. It is this random point over here, 2 and 6. So the 2 is our x and the 6 is our y. Those things we're now going to sub in to the x and the y placeholders. So y is 6, that comes from our random point. A, we are looking for. x is 2. So we've got 2 minus 1 over here. And then x again is 2. 2 plus 1, that goes over there. So if we solve for A, we're going to get A is equal to 2. Okay, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, so 6 equals 3A, therefore A equals 2. Now that we know A, we can take it a step further, and we can sub our 2, our A equals 2, back in the place of A over there. Let's take a look. Now we take our a, which is 2, and we sub it back in the place of our a over here. So we got y, y stays open now. Remember, we just filled in these x's and these y's, our inputs and our outputs, with that coordinate, that random point that was given in order to help us find a. Now that we found a, we leave our y open. a is 2. This x we leave open. Now remember x1 and x2 are our y, our x-intercepts. So x1 is the yellow one, x1 is positive 1, so we've got x minus positive 1. And then x2, it doesn't matter which one is which by the way, x2 I said is the green one, which is negative 1. So we've got x minus minus 1, which is x plus 1. Then what we can do is we can expand, so we say x times x is x squared, x times 1 is plus x, minus 1 times x is minus x, those x's go away, and minus 1 times plus 1 is minus 1. So all I'm doing here is I am multiplying out. If you simplify that, remember I'm leaving the 2 over here for now, we're going to get x squared minus 1. And then my last step is that I distribute the 2 into that bracket. This is just a bit of algebra revision. So we've got y is equal to 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And now there we go. There's my equation. And see how it is in the form of y equals a x squared plus q. We can easily see if this makes sense we can see that my a value is positive. And that makes sense because my graph is a smiley face graph. Can you see it's smiling? My x is positive, my coefficient of x squared is positive. And we've got a negative two over here for my y-intercept. And that makes sense because that value over here, that y-intercept where the graph cuts the y-axis would be negative. Let's do example three. In example three, you can see over here that I'm not given a y-intercept, not given an x-intercept, I'm given two random points. So how do we do this? Well, let's start with the standard form of the equation, and we're going to fill these points into the standard form. So I've got two points. I'm going to start with two equations, filling the x and the y in each equation. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to take each point given. So here's negative 3 and 5, and the other point given, 1 and negative 3, and I'm going to sub each of them into their own little equation. So obviously we know how to do that. The negative 3 goes in the place of x. Remember to use brackets. And the 5 over here goes in the place of y, right? So we sub in and we're going to simplify each little equation. So how I do it over here, I'm going to do the exactly the same for the other coordinate with this equation over here. To simplify that, I'm going to have negative 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to have 9a plus q. And then 5 over there. I do exactly the same for the other equation with the other coordinate. So over here, I'm going to have a plus q. 
that's equal to negative 3. As you can see, I now have two equations. Equation number 1 and equation number 2. I have two unknowns. So, you should know at this point what to do in order to solve for my two unknowns. We're going to have to do simultaneous equations to solve for A and Q. Now, you've probably, be, probably been taught multiple ways to do simultaneous equations. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter which way you do. I'm going to do the method called substitution. So, I have two equations. I'm going to, for this equation, for equation number one, I'm going to make Q the subject of my formula. So, I'm going to leave Q alone on the side. I've got 5 minus 9A. So, I haven't done anything to the equation. As you can see, everything's still the same. I've left Q on the one side. I've taken the 9a over to become minus 9a. This is now my new version of equation number 1. Okay, same equation. Then I'm going to take equation 1. I'm going to sub equation 1 into equation 2. So this is equation 2. I'm just going to rewrite equation 2. Negative 3a equals a plus q. Now how substitution works, you should know from the algebra section, is q. In equation one, Q is equal to all of that stuff. So in the place of Q, for equation number two, I'm going to sub in that stuff over there that I highlighted in yellow. So we've got negative three equals A plus, now because it's a plus, I don't necessarily need to use brackets, but five minus nine A. And then I just simplify. So I've got A minus nine A, so we've got negative eight A over here, and over here, I've got negative 3 minus 5. So I've got negative 8 over there. So negative 8 divided by 8, A is equal to 1. Then once I found A, using my substitution method, I sub A equals 1. I found the value of A into either of the equations. So I'm going to sub it into equation 1. Sub A into equation 1. We've got 5 minus 9A equals q. So now that I've found a, I take a, the value for a, which is 1, I sub in with brackets, and that is going to give me q. So 5 minus 9 is going to give me q. So q is going to be equal to negative 4. If you would like to see more videos on algebra, solving equations, simultaneous equations, please let me know in the comments below. So that was just very briefly going over solving using simultaneous equations. But the most important thing is we've now found our value for A and our value for Q. And we know that once we've done that, we found the equation. So remember, Y is equal to AX squared plus Q. So we said A is 1. So 1X squared, or X squared, plus Q, we've got negative 4. So there we go. We've now got our equation for example number 3. So in summary, remember the methods slightly differ depending on what they give you. You need to look carefully at what they give you and then decide on your game plan moving forward. If you like this video and you want to see more maths, let me know what you want to see in the comments below. Remember to watch my other Parabola videos if you've missed them. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up for me and subscribe for more maths and science videos. I'll see you in the next one.